Okay, let's unpack this. Let's do it. We are diving into the 2025, 2026 winter forecast analysis. And uh, the main takeaway from all the sources is that you absolutely cannot trust the word average this year. No, not at all. It's all about volatility, what some are calling weather whiplash. So what's driving that? Well, you've got a duel happening. On one side, there's the expected baseline, a weak, pretty transient La Nina event. Okay. It's just sort of hovering around that minus 0.5 to minus 0.9 degrees Celsius threshold. So it's barely holding on. Exactly. And yeah. that's important because it's expected to transition and transition fast to ENSO neutral by early 2026. And that rapid transition alone is usually enough to mess with global weather patterns, right? It is. But here's the real complication, the thing that's overriding that weak signal. The wild card. The wild card. It's the exceptionally volatile stratospheric polar vortex. We've seen record early signs of disruption. Now that sounds highly technical. Yeah. So walk us through it. What does a volatile vortex actually mean for us down here on the ground? It's fascinating, really. You have these high altitude mechanics forcing change at the surface. This vortex is uh, basically a massive high-speed circulation of extremely cold air, miles above the Arctic. And it's looking weak. It's already showing signs of weakness. Yes, right. And that's compounded by the quasi-biennial oscillation, the QBO, being in its easterly phase. And that specific setup. That specific setup significantly increases the risk of what we call a sudden stratospheric warming, or an SSW. A warming that brings cold. That sounds completely paradoxical. It does, doesn't it? An SSW means the stratosphere suddenly warms up, and we're talking a potential spike of 50 degrees Celsius. Wow. But that doesn't warm the surface. Instead, it violently disrupts and pushes that massive, frigid polar air mass down. Down into the mid-latitudes. Exactly. So the combination of the fading La Nina and this volatile polar vortex, it just guarantees these huge, high-amplitude shifts globally. High volatility. So this means completely different forecast depending on where you are. Let's start with North America. Right. If you look at, say, the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies, they're seeing a classic cold, snowy La Nina signal. It's holding strong there. But if you live in the U.S. Northeast, you are in what the sources call the maximum zone of uncertainty. So what does that mean in practice? Well, the seasonal average leans warmer. But that unstable polar vortex increases the specific risk of powerful nor'easters. So the instability means the rain-snow line will be tricky. Highly complex. You're looking at a difficult and disruptive mix of rain, sleet, and uh, ice. Very messy. That sounds messy is the right word. So how does this stratospheric chaos translate when we look across the Atlantic? What's going on in Europe and Asia? Europe is facing what's being called a blocking paradox. A blocking paradox. Yeah. The average temperatures suggest mildness, but January 2026 is flagged as this critical window for severe cold. Okay, so how does that work? If that polar vortex instability creates high latitude blocking, think of it like a huge high pressure traffic jam over the Arctic. It funnels that severe cold south. And we're talking about? We are talking about Potential beast from the east conditions. Temperatures dropping to minus 10, even minus 20 degrees Celsius across Eastern Europe. And at the same time, Western Siberia is forecast for just brutal sustained thermal stress, potentially below minus 40. And of course, we can't ignore the climate change amplifiers in all of this. You can't. If you connect this to the bigger picture, Local marine heat waves in the North Atlantic and the Mediterranean are acting like storm superchargers. Creating a juicier atmosphere. Oh, juicier atmosphere is a great way to put it. It fuels extreme rainfall, and that leads to major flash flooding risks, especially in places like the Balkans and Greece. So this volatility creates some really acute infrastructural risks. Yeah. Beyond just ice storms, you also mentioned a severe agricultural risk from false springs. That's right. And this raises a really important question. What does all this mean for operational planning? How so? Well, you get these abnormally warm periods that trigger early budding in crops, but then the inevitable late season Arctic outbreak, which is made more likely by this instability. It just wipes everything out. Causes catastrophic winter kill. So planning has to account for these rapid swings. The emphasis has to be on these high impact, short duration events, not the sustained trends. So the overarching takeaway here is pretty clear. The average seasonal forecast isn't just useless this year, it's actively misleading. It is. The most impactful events of this winter will be driven entirely by instability and these rapid shifts. So what's the final word for our listeners? Focus your preparedness not on sustained averages, but on sudden, short-duration, extreme events. 
Given the undeniable link between these early SSW signals and the midwinter disruption, you should be ready for the most severe weather to arrive right on the heels of that transition to ENSO neutral in early 2026. Get ready for whiplash. Get ready for whiplash.